What's going on guys, the Inhuman Beta, and I'm back with more Fate Extra. Last time we finished through the second air the second floor of the area and got the trigger. And I'm level 15, almost 16. So, anyways, <clears throat> for no real reason, I head I head to the chapel where I encounter a man dressed in green. Dan. Sorry, I <clears throat> Oh, I can never really do this unless my throat is just destroyed. Give me a second. <sighs> Sorry about yesterday. I do think that the fact your wound did not threaten your life is a silver lining, however. <laughs> well, admirable master of archer, I fail to understand why you acted as you did. Yes, I have been questioning my actions as well. To use one of the three command seals given to me to help my enemy, of all things. Command seals. Three irrefutable commands given to all the masters in the Holy Grail War. I explained this two episodes ago, but let's talk about it again. If it's within the rules, they will guarantee that an action is performed, whatever the cost. But it was the right thing to do. Also, I am here on behalf of Her Majesty, the Queen. It has been a long time since... No. This is the first time a fight has been for personal reasons. As a mere soldier, I'd have praised Archer's action. As a knight, I must condemn them. And as I did, I could almost feel as if the spirit of my wife approved and was proud of me. Oh, God. <coughs> That's surprising. Mm. It's the same story old every ma every old man has. It's been so long I've even forgotten the sound of her voice. It's an obvious truth. As a soldier, one is required to abide by military regulations. There are no allowances made for even one such as myself to go beyond what is permitted. You should take care too. The ends don't always justify the means. Her grat is an insidi insidious thing. If you let it, it will blind you to the future and it'll blind you to the future and all it holds. Yes, it will bind you to the future, even though you should already be moving towards the future. Oh my god, this is killing my throat. Please stop talking. God damn it. So now, this young lady, I will never condone any contact that would stain my conscience. Nothing more came from what seemed to be an apology of sorts. And beyond the journey itself, the path to the Grail lies in dignity and self-respect. God damn it. Dan, stop speaking! It's odd that I'd speak like this to you. You'd do well to laugh at the musterings of this old man. With that said, the old man closes his eyes. It'd be the worst form of bad manners to disturb him while he's praying. It'd be better if I just leave. Master, it's day five. We should go see what Ronnie has to say. She might have more info in the future. Why don't we talk to her regularly from now on? All right, right, it's day five, and after collecting all of our shit, we need to go see Ronnie and see what the stars hold for us. But for things first, I'm getting my alteration of soul out of the way. So, I have six points. <laughs> Most of these are going into attack. My strength ranking has increased. Nothing else happened. Well, shit. Alright, if I recall, I think Ronnie is on the third floor. I was wrong. She is on the second floor. Every floor but the one I tried. God damn it, she is on the third floor. Damn it! Curse you effect that make you disappear. Alright. Good day. 
I see you've brought something of Sir Dan Sir Blackmore's as I had requested. I give you my thanks. You brought it at the right time as I can read Sir Blackmore's star today. She said she wished to learn more about people and humanity in general. But still, I wonder if what I'm doing now is really okay. As a master, I feel uneasy having another master help me, even though Rin has been doing it this entire time, especially as we might have to fight one another. My professor's words are my guide. He told me specifically to learn about humans. So please, put your mind at ease. You have nothing to worry about from me. Except for the fact I might kill you. Learning more about Sir Blackmore will help your cause as well, correct? With her mechanical reasoning, Ronnie examines, examines what might be Archer's arrow. She mumbles and then nods in understanding. With this, brushing the object softly with her fingers, Ronnie closes her eyes and turns her face to the sky. She's not looking at the sky, you lied to me. The fate of which the stars speak, you can learn many things if you simply open your mind. The star which governs Sir Blackmore's servant shines brightly in the heavens today. To be honest, I have no clue as to what astrology is or what it's supposed to accomplish, but... She claims that today certain portions can be read in the stars, and I believe that she can see things about his servant. No. In astrology, how very Magus-like. I hear all of Atlas's alchemists are capable astrologists. But I'm more interested in what her professor has to say. Maybe we'll learn more about her, too. For the time being, we should focus on our enemy. I find myself in... a forest. It's deep. Dark. Running her hand along Archer's arrow, the now entranced Ronnie begins speaking in a quiet tone. An incredibly dark color. At times, a harbinger of infamy, a life spent in darkness, admiration mixed with trepidation, the color of the solitary path he walks. His green-clad form blends in with the forest. He snipes his enemies from the shadows. It seems that the servant's way of life created a noble phantasm that would conceal him. A life that consisted of cowering in the darkness, shooting his enemies from afar. It seems totally at odds with Dan, who would fight with dignity and honor. I agree. I think that there must be some sort of longing hidden deep within his soul. A desire to live an honest life, out in the full light and warmth of the sun. I wrecked my brain trying to think of a hero out of legend who'd fit such a description. I know one! I start with those who are heroes because they were named so. Although that'll take a while. Life tainted with corruption. Many heroes have sinned, but he seems to have gone too far. I wonder if the legendary soul I find myself allied with shares the same bleak history. I guess we'll never know. <laughs> As I try to follow this line of thought, Ronnie begins to speak again in the same quiet tone. This may not be the one that I am searching for. To say clearly, I'm not sure though. Longing is the reason for this fissure. This is something told by my professor, a part of humans that I understand. I can feel him deep within the second floor of the arena. Maybe you should talk to him directly. After lowering her head in a bow and thanking me. She didn't do that, she tilted her head sideways. Thanking me again, she once again turns her eyes to the sky. A mismatched cog. I wonder if I'll mesh with anything. With my servant. With all that's happening around me. Alright, now that that's taken care of. She said that he's on the second floor of the arena. Looks like we get to have a rumble. First thing first, let's stop by... Library and see if we can learn anything today. 
That is looking like Jack Diddle. Cool. And Tyga's not here yet. I think she won't come till tomorrow. First things first, though, I'm going to grab a couple items. So nothing else. I want a couple of these return crystals to use in case I'm in bad shape. Alright, exit. There we go. And yeah, with Archer totally prepared for the fight up ahead. Maybe it's the fact that you kept get, getting him to do all of your shit. Yeah, bitch. Fucking slap a hoe up in here. Also, let's go check see if Archer has anything to say beforehand. Because I don't have my cheat sheet open yet. Or open at all for this, so I'm not sure. A word about the item folders in the arena. Only useful, don't become too obsessed with them. I'd be a poor joke if we were jumps from behind while you searched for hidden folders. I hate being taken by surprise, but if we do go folder hunting, we commit fully or don't do it at all. So certain servants have certain requirements for bonus things. They'll give you items and whatnot if you complete certain things. I think collecting items is one of Archer's, but I'm not sure. Mainly because it doesn't really affect the plot and you don't really need the items for it, so... Okay. Dan Blackmore. Oh, honorable he may be, but I find his dedication and focus to be unnerving. It makes me wonder why a man of such conviction would chase after the Holy Grail. Well, it's obvious he is determined to win. Tin the Grail is no small feat. Or could it be that he does not truly understand what it means to possess the Holy Grail? For now, we should concentrate on fighting the trigger that you already found. The clock is ticking, after all. This is the arena entrance. Would you like to go there? Ah, yeah. Second floor. <laughs> Hands it up, master. I can feel those two somewhere nearby. They must be on the second floor. They've been hit with a penalty, so why don't we take them out here and now? So Archer is, uh, is basically saying, why don't we go fuck them up? Do which I say, sure, why not? No, go away! I think that was your pattern, if I recall correctly. And now I do even more damage because I'm a badass. And I'll probably level up before I leave here. Unless I'm forced to leave after confronting Dan and Archer. Break, attack, break, attack. Break, attack. Your life is done with. Yeah, it's a shitty experience for fighting it. Oh boy. Now, I'm willing to bet anything that they're waiting. Not by the switch, like I originally thought. <laughs> well, at least I know this thing's patterned to fuck it up real easy, at least. So I don't have to waste any time. Who knows if I keep killing them, maybe I'll level up in the process. No, just one of those things waiting. 
let's see. If the idea is for me to go and get the trigger, maybe they're over nearby the trigger. That would make the most sense. And your life just got fucked up. <laughs> Archer, the ultimate badass now. God, my throat actually does hurt from doing all those damn Blackmore lines. He talks like an old man and that slight grinding sandpaper on my- Oh god, I can't even emulate it right now, it hurts so bad. Alright, I guess it's better to head this way first. Because one, these things aren't too hard to kill and that's where I need to go anyways. There we go. Okay, no matter, I'll kill this thing in a matter of a couple swings. Told you I would. Let's see, I don't... Ah! Okay, they're actually hanging out near the exit. Can't believe the exit was right behind me the whole time. Damn it! Alright, let's do battle. They're standing in a room someplace. It looks more spacious than normal. A slender man clad in green and the knight he serves. It's Dan and his servant! Dun, dun, dun! Why am I drinking my soda? I should be drinking my water. What do we do now, boss? They did appear right in front of us. The hand on their weapon, my servant squints their eye. My servant squints their eyes upon hearing Dan's and Archer's words. You sure say some hilarious things sometimes. What? You're not hiding this time around? Seriously, it's all right with me. You can't even use that noble phantasm you're so proud of. <laughs> Your arrogant tone really gets on my nerves. But isn't hiding the only thing you're good at? I mean, you've been cowering in shadows since you were a mortal. Or did your lord's dazzling words rob you of the ability to conceal yourself from the world? Archer's words. <laughs> wow, this sentence isn't gonna be awkward. Archer's word. Archer's words seem to take Archer totally by surprise, as if his words touch on the enemy's very core. For a moment, his normally calm demeanor became incredibly flustered. <laughs> What's wrong? Should I go first then? Archer's eyes shine with evil intent. As he reaches under his cape, I fear he may unleash his noble phantasm. I will hide myself just as you asked. Now experience the slaughter of the Sherwood Forest. Calm yourself, Archer. Your behavior is completely out of character. Yeah, yeah, I know. Sir Bossman, your request is kind of a pain in the ass, you know. You do realize who I am, don't you? Asking me to fight toe to toe? You drunk or something? <laughs> I really don't get it. You take away the element of surprise. What else is there left for me? My looks, maybe? My sweet, handsome face? Alas, its power only work on simple village lasses. You wish to complain? Is your prowess as a hunter so dependent upon the power of the faceless king? <laughs> uh, no. Well, I mean, even if I get nervous around that, okay. I do have pride in my archery skills, though. In fight with that in mind, a sniper such as yours, myself would know more than anyone else about your skills. And what I would... <coughs> and what I would do is kill my throat. Oh, I'll be so glad to be done with this one. And what I know would send chills through most people. I have confidence in you, Archer. It's not like I have a choice. I disprove of all of this, but I will obey. He is my master, after all. Fortunately for me, my opponent is a mere chick. I rarely attack directly, but it shouldn't matter in this case. You're going to try and talk your way out of this? It seems your tactics will always be your biggest weakness. Wow, you know how to hurt a guy. 
Since we're both the same class, a direct confrontation might be tough. But I can't just blow off the confidence my master has in me. Consider my excuses to be bad jokes. An honest head-to-head -head fight, it's not really my style. But what the hell, I'll play along, comrade. No. Color me surprised. And I thought you were a flake. But you actually devote yourself to your convictions. Hunter of the Forest, it seems that though your master's nobility, you see the folly that was your existence. I wonder, as different as we are from one another, I get the feeling we both have similar regrets. You're offensively narcissistic. I'm a classic nihilist. Don't you think we're perfectly suited to be enemies? I won't argue with that. If you think about it, I wonder if those two aren't just like us in a way. Ha! You're way off base. Let's get this over with. I'll stain that coat of yours red with your own blood. God, thank... Whatever, after a long-winded talking, we finally get to fight Archer. And with the Matrix level up, we can see some of his skills. And I'm going to cast Cure because he likes to use Poison. That's a good thing because it looks like Hio was just guarding the first turn, which gave me an opening to use my pre-projection. And now I can just <laughs> wound him with Weaken for forever. I'm actually not doing bad on his health, actually. And of course, I have nothing to cure. Alright. Uh. Let's try Break as the first one. There we go. Just as I thought. There's his poisoned arrow. I was waiting for that. As you haven't guessed, Archer tends to favor uh, poison attacks. Ouch, that one hurt a lot. Need to heal up. Break. I can use this quite a bit more. So I'll abuse it for the next... The next couple of things. Because once this is over, the fight will be over as well, so I won't have to worry about it much. And now we'll just ride out a wave of weaken attacks. And I'll add strength. But that's fine, I'll just keep chipping away at his life. And the last attack will be my only real gamble. Wall of Thorns. Nah, eh, minor damage. Nothing too bad to worry about. Huh. <sighs> I'm tired of this. Really, this whole deal is totally a waste of time and effort. I will not allow vulgar and petulant language, Archer. As my servant, I wish for you to behave as a knight. Aye, aye. Mm -hmm. uh, you sure are suffocating, Mr. Bossman. I know, I know. Foul play and stuff is a no-no. Jeez, cut off my arms and legs already. Ever heard of these things people have called personalities? Well, if I have to, the best archers can shoot with their teeth. Ha! <laughs> Pretty hardcore. Alright, I'll be your knight in shining armor. I'm not so hot at being a knight, but I'm not too bad with a lance. Excellent spirit! We are already en route to the next battlefield. Do not let your focus sway! <laughs> Finally, we managed to get them to go away. 
Once we're sure that Dan and Archer have left, Archer relaxes a little. A small smile forms on his lips. Did you hear, Master? He spoke of his home. Sherwood Forest. Ronnie's astrology reading was quite remarkable. She was pretty much dead on about everything. Also, Dan mentioned a fairly important keyword. The Faceless King. With this new info, I think we're closing in on Archer's true name. You should look into this more when we return to campus. Yay, we have level 3 now. Actually, yeah, I'll save that because this episode's pretty much at an end. We'll just head back to campus. I'll probably train up tomorrow. Since it will be my last day to train. It is nighttime now. Apparently Archer doesn't have anything to say since the uh since he went to sleep. But we did learn one thing. We learned a key word, Sherwood Forest. Just a pass for is said to be a place where a famous chivalrous thief fought against the tyranny of John, Richard the Lion Lionheart's younger brother. I mean, come on, if that doesn't give it away by now, it's... It's obvious who he is. Everyone should know who, what Sherwood Forest is. Anyways, that'll be it for now, guys. So if you liked this video, be sure to hit like and comment. And if you want to see more from me, hit that subscribe button, where you'll be up to date with all of my newest videos when they come out. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you all later. Asta.